I'm Micah Smith, and in today's quick tip, we're going to look at the JSON Object Manager package that's available in BotStore. So first off, if you haven't checked it out, BotStore is an online marketplace for packages and bots for both version 11 and also in A2019. If we go to A2019, there's a bunch of packages that are available. One that I like in particular is the JSON Object Manager package. And the JSON Object Manager package is specifically helpful when dealing with um, REST responses, right? So if you don't have the package yet, you can come to this page. It's at botstore.automationanywhere.com. Just search for JSON Object Manager. When you hit Get Package, it's going to add that to your account. You'll want to log in here. And then you'll be able to add that to your control room environment by going to this bot store link and then going to my downloads. And then you can install it directly from there. If you're using community edition, the JSON object manager package has already been installed. So you're good to go. Um, but let's go back to looking at this um, particular package and how we can use it. So I set up a quick uh, demo bot that we'll, we'll walk through. Um, and what we want to do is, is really why you would use this is when you make a call to a REST service, the response that you receive is almost always in the form of a JSON. And a JSON is just a format for how we would structure that data as a response. So this is an example JSON that I have on the screen. And this is what we'll use for our example today. This is up on GitHub. So I'll put this link in the description below. But we're going to use this and we're going to see if we can pull back, you know, what's the company name? What's the state name? How many employees are there? How do I get the details for each employee, right? Because these are common issues that we deal with as developers. So let's go back to our control room. I've got just a, a dumb empty bot here. Um, let's first add a REST web services action and we want to do the get method. Now, because we're referencing a JSON file that's just stored on GitHub, uh, we don't have any authentication or we don't have to send a body or anything like that. Um, so we're just going to put in that URL. And again, that's in the description. And then when that REST call occurs, the response comes to us as a dictionary. And a dictionary is just key value pairs, right? So there's going to be a header. There's going to be some header information. There's going to be a body. And we want the body information. So let's create a dictionary real quick. And I'll just call this D REST response. And I can leave everything else as default. We don't have to change anything else there. And I'll hit create and select. Cool. So that's going to come back to us. Now, what I always like to do whenever I'm, you know, using these REST web services is test to make sure that I'm actually getting the response before I start to, you know, try to manipulate it. So I'm just going to put in here into my message box. I'm going to hit F2 and I will say D REST response. It's going to say, hey, tell me the dictionary key or what's the key to the value that you want. I'm going to type in body here and hit yes, insert and hit run. So ideally, when this runs, I should be getting that exact same JSON that we just looked at from that GitHub page. And it probably won't be formatted quite as nicely. Yeah, so we can see it's still all there. We just got, you know, some line breaks that don't look the exact same, but that's OK. All right. So we've got our JSON. So we've got our response. And again, this is really common when you're dealing with different APIs uh, within your bots. You're going to get a response as a JSON and you somehow have to figure out how to get the data you need out of that response. So I've got the JSON object manager package installed and it's got three actions. Initialize, which allows me to set it up. Query, which allows me to actually read values from that initialized JSON. And then set where I can actually modify JSON keys. So we'll look at this. Uh, we'll look at all three of these. First, let's initialize. So here it says, give me the properly formatted JSON object. So I could give it, you know, if I had JSON like copied to my clipboard, I could put that in. Alternatively, what I can do here is press F2 again. We'll do our D rest response. And again, I'm going to give body. Um, specifically, make sure that you use an uppercase B for body here. I noticed that this one is case sensitive. So do make sure you have body there. And I'll return that to a prompt assignment. Now, this is the, the response of trying to set up that session. So if I'm really building a bot, I want to check to make sure that I'm getting a positive response here. Because this is just a, a demo one, we don't really need to do anything. I'm just going to set it to prompt assignment and leave it. So once that's set up, Right. Once I've initialized my session, 
then I can actually query that session. So notice that my session name is default. I'm going to come down here and add a query. And again, my session name is default, so we know exactly what session I'm looking at. And I can actually query to pull back these JSON values. So if I wanted the company name, right, I'm going to copy this, which is my key. I'll paste that in here. Again, that's my JSON query string. I'm going to return back. Uh, I'll just return back to, to prompt assignment real quick. And we'll store that in a message box so we can see it. And we'll hit run. So this will, again, pull that from GitHub. It's going to initialize the JSON object manager. It's going to create that session. And then it's going to allow me to pull back one of the values from that based on my key. And here, ABC Ventures is the, uh, the name of the company. So I gave that key. It gave me the corresponding value. Now, that would work the same for all of these values. So we won't go over all of those. But notice employees. Employees is a little bit different. Employees is actually an array. And it's an array of JSON objects. So it's a little bit different. Let's see how we could work with this one. So if I just gave, uh, let's go back here, employees here. Let's see what this looks like. I believe this is going to return to me the entire array, which may or may not be what you want. But let's at least look to see what happens here. Yeah, so it gave me back the entire array. Um, that's fine. That may be what you need to do, but that would be how you get that value out. Most likely what I need to do is figure out how many employees there are and then try to access specific values of those employees. So if I knew that, you know, I always have to grab the value for employee zero, which is the first employee, and I need to grab their, let's say email, I could type in email here. and hit run and this should return the email of the first employee and again the reason i put zero is because this employee is in position zero of this array the very first object of that array so here i have that m ify uh, these are all just dummy values that i pulled from some um, you know, dummy employee creator website or something. Uh, okay, so we have that. Now, the other thing we want to try and do is how do we figure out the length of that array? So if I typed in employees.length, open and close parentheses there, and hit run, this should return to me the length of the array. So here it's telling me there's six employees, and that's correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we see that we have a, a six total employees in our array. Now, the last thing I want to show how to do here is once I know that, then the next logical thing for me to do is to build a loop. So for my loop, I want to iterate one time per employee. Now, a shorthand that you can do here is if I type in, again, that's being stored in prompt assignment. So I'm just going to type in prompt assignment here. If I fill that in, it's going to give me an issue because that's a string and it's asking for a number. But what I can do is type dot string colon. And you can see that the IntelliSense is coming up here with some suggestions for me. One of them happens to be two number. So it allows me to convert it to a number directly. For each iteration of my loop, I can create a variable to reference what iteration we're on. So I would say uh, here I'm going to put in current employee and hit create and select. And then I'll save that. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. My loop iterates with the very first um, iteration being a number one. But my JSON array, if I were to reference that very first object, it's zero based. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a two number, uh, a number two string, sorry, as my very first action inside of my loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that uh, in current employee, right? That's my iterator. And I'm going to subtract one from it, right? Because I know that my array is zero based, but my counter is one based. And I'm going to assign that to a new variable that I'm going to call s current employee. 
All right, and then we'll add one more query. Uh, let's go back here. One more query command. And here I'm gonna say employees. And again, I'm referencing this as a plural just because that's how it's referenced here. If this was just employee, then I would reference it that way. But that's, that's where that's coming from. So I'm putting employees. Now I'm gonna use those same square brackets again, but this time instead of actually putting in a number, I'm gonna type in my variable. I'm gonna put uh, s current employee, uh, and then my dollar sign. And then I'll do dot, because that dot notation will allow me to reference a value inside of that employee. And let's say email. So if I needed to grab the employee email, I'll return that to prompt assignment again, just because I keep using that one over and over. I'll move my message box up inside of that because what I want to see now is that every single time we iterate through the loop, I should be getting each user's email address. So let's run this. And we'll see what comes out. So there's the first user. There's the second user. Third user. So this is working. And I know that it worked because I actually got this last person and I didn't get an error, right? If I had not done this uh, current employee minus one, I would have likely gotten an error there. Uh, because I'd be referencing something that was outside the bounds of the array. Um, and so that would have erred off. The last uh, action that I want to show you is the set action. And with set, I can actually set any of those different values. So let's say I wanted to change the email address for that first employee. I could type in employees, um, oops, it's a plural, zero for that first person. And I'll put email. I think we just called it email. Yep. And for the new value, I'm just going to put my email address, micah.smith at automationanywhere.com. The updated JSON element, this is just a response that you would get back from this session, basically just giving you this like unique code that it worked. Um, we, you know, I would check for that if it's a real bot to check to make sure that I'm getting the response I expected, kind of like when we set the session. Um, we're not going to show that value directly here though. What I want to do instead is I'm going to show a different value. So let's go back to message box. And what I'm going to do here, uh, actually, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do a query again. Sorry. Let's do a query after our set. I'm just going to type in a period here. And that will return the entire uh, JSON object, whatever was in my session, uh, back to me. So I'm going to hit save. That's going to return it to prompt assignment. I'm going to put in my message box, prompt assignment again. Oops, just hit F2 and do it that way. Oh, you know what? I'm going to cancel this. We don't really need to see this loop running again. So I'll just disable this guy. There we go. So this should just show me the updated uh, JSON that includes my email address for user one. So this is the entire JSON. Again, not, not like pretty printed like we saw in the, in the GitHub, but here we can see for that very first user, the name is Morton and the email is micah.smith at automationanywhere.com. So if you had to update a JSON and then maybe ma remake a call or call to another uh, API, you could do that. Hopefully this quick tip was helpful. Uh, check out the bot store for additional packages that you can add on to your environment that can really help you with accelerated development. This has been Quick Tips. I'm Micah Smith. Go be great.